Welcome inside the Acres Broadcast Center. I'm Tim Mulhaupt, and this is your Sports Nightly Ticker. Huskers football players and coaches met with the media today, including offensive and defensive coordinators Matt Lubick and Eric Chenander. Chenander acknowledged that while he still wants more from his defense, he's proud of the attitude his unit has built this season. We're playing really good defense. We have a really good culture in that room. Um, we have really good people in that room. Those kids are, you know, they're, they're football players. They love the game. They love being around each other. They know what we're trying to do. They want to come to work. They want to play for each other. They want to play for the fans. They want to play for Nebraska. I just, I just love the culture that we have in that room. And these kids are, they're not going to do anything differently. They're not going to, they're not going to say the woe is me. Well, we lost a couple games. They don't care. Right back to work. And there's more college football news to come tonight. It is behind us right now in our studio. We're soon to learn the college football poll, the latest updates, uh, including the top four, which will be later on in the hour. After a tough week last week, Huskers volleyball fell, behind, uh, fell back to their previous ranking of ninth overall in the latest ABCA poll. Uh, excuse me, volleyball coach John Cook will meet with John Baylor at the top of our second hour tonight to discuss the quick turnaround for the Huskers. We're still tied with Wisconsin atop the Big Ten standings heading into November. Huskers men tem men's tennis is busy preparing for this weekend's Big Ten Fall Championships. Nebraska will send four players to East Lansing, Michigan to represent their program this weekend. And that are, those players are junior Shunya Maruyama, sophomore Nick Wiedenhorn, and a pair of freshmen, Calvin Muller and Roni Hitoranta, will all be heading out to Michigan again this weekend. Also, seniors Dario Huber and Victor Moreno Lozano will also be competing as a duo at the ITA National Fall Championships in San Diego this weekend after earning an at-large bid last weekend. Starting this Friday, November 5th, follow along with all the tennis action by following Huskers Men's Tennis on Twitter at Huskers M Tennis, all one word. Well, Major League Baseball have a new championship uh, champion tonight. That is the question on every baseball fan's mind as the Atlanta Braves are one win away in Houston tonight. With the victory, Atlanta could secure their fourth World Series title while Houston looks to win and survive to force Game 7 tomorrow night. With the series, uh, that one will get going at 7.09 p.m. Central. Max Fried will take the mound for Atlanta, while Luis Garcia will throw for Houston. That's the ticker. I'm Tim Mulhelpt, and this is Sports Nightly on the Huskers Radio Network. Live inside Memorial Stadium, this is the Huskers Radio Network. Rolling to the right side as Demorat being pressured, throws downfield, passes intercepted, picked off by the Cornhuskers. It's Deontay Williams, second pick of the day, third turnover forced by the Blackshirts, and Nebraska will take over. Third and five from the seven. Pistol set, two wideouts left, Lever to the near side. In motion is two ray, snap back, turn, run the option to the near side. Adrian pitches it back to Samore to the five. He is in. Touchdown, Nebraska. It's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers Radio Network. Well, I'm just tingling with excitement for the first <laughs> college football poll to be revealed here tonight, huh? It may take a few minutes. I mean, it's just such the dramatics <laughs> and the buildup, and they milk the hour for all it's worth, and there's going to be more talking heads for I don't know how we should set the over under we should have set the over under on what time it actually is revealed but they just uh 25 through 21 on the screen right now with uh iowa at 22 and wisconsin at 21. Well, we, we still play them yes so yeah, yeah. there we go and, so. and how many more will be left on this coming up that has been on the schedule all, already all right <laughs> yeah, yeah the two michigans oklahoma and the buckeyes who we play this week so welcome to the sports Island. i know last night we had a basketball show in the first hour so we didn't have open phones for you and and i know a lot of you probably want to talk about uh, what happened on saturday with the huskers a disappointing day a rough day for adrian martinez uh, it was pr probably his poorest game of the year for the big red and so uh, if you'd like to give us some thoughts about that 402-413-2400 the number to dot us up with a comment or question or fire off a text felt really good about the game all week long last week going into the boilermaker game love the what the Huskers did on their opening drive of the game when they went 82 yards in 12 plays, a great mix of run and pass. They scored. They go up 7 nothing. They have the ball in positive territory on their second drive with a seven-point lead. They run a little option play that gets the ball down inside the 40. 
a holding call, which I've, I have gone back a couple of times, Jessica, and looked, but I can't find the hold, but it took the ball back, and the next play was a pick six, and it kind of flipped the game a little bit. But I still felt pretty good at half that Nebraska was going to be okay. I really did, too, especially because we've been seeing such, um, you know, great second-half adjustments by this team. You know, whether it was at Minnesota where they came out flat and then they came out and did a lot of good things in the second half there, or just, you know, again, just the second-half adjustments all year have been there. And so I was... You know, when they, you go into halftime with the lead, you feel pretty good that they're going to come out and add to that and, you know, fix some of the things, some of the issues that, you know, even it, that they might have had in that first half. But, yeah, you just, I mean, just you can't overcome four turnovers. Right. It's just so, it's just almost impossible to do if you're not forcing them yourself. And I know Adrian felt terrible. He, he had a bad day. And when your quarterback has a bad day, it's sometimes tough to overcome that. And some balls were sailing on him. He he tried to do too much with the option pitch, and that got him in trouble. Um, you know, I thought we can slice and dice this up, but it, like you just said, you can't overcome four turnovers and beat somebody when they don't turn it over at all. So Purdue didn't give us any balls, and we give them the football four different times. I mean, week in and week out across college football, I mean, you just cannot – it's any sport. You cannot yeah. give the other team opportunities and, and – you know, not get them yourselves. I mean, if you're not forcing those turnovers, um, you can't keep giving them the opportunities. Eventually, they're going to probably outscore you. And that's, again, another one-score game. You know, it's it, kudos to the black shirts that it wasn't more than that, to be honest with you. I mean, the, the fact that it was as close as it was and you turn the ball over and you don't force any yourselves, I mean, that was um, – pretty big a lot of times that look at look what happened to Purdue the week before at Wisconsin they and five, five turnovers. turnovers and they got beat pretty bad right. so you know usually if you turn the ball over that much you get beat a lot worse and to take it one step further the week before that Purdue forced four turnovers at Iowa and won so yeah. that's what happens I mean turnovers are such a big part of it um, very disappointing I it was it was sad to see folks leaving the game early I get it I understand it everybody's frustrated about this thing um, the players are still fighting hard. I thought we got the onside kick. When, that thing, to the, when it happened uh, to my naked eye, I thought Cam Taylor Britt was going to grab the football, and boy, that would have been a fun final minute of the game if the Oscars had the ball at the 45-yard line with a chance to go win that thing, but it didn't happen. And so we're disappointed. I know everybody is. Everybody's frustrated. Everybody wishes they had the answer to this thing. Um, I, I, all I can say, let's hang in there with this team. Let's hang because they're going to keep preparing hard and getting ready to play. We have another excellent team coming our way here on Saturday with, with the Buckeyes. And we've seen Nebraska play very well against uh, teams that are, uh, I mean, look what they did at Oklahoma, against Michigan, at Michigan State. They've right. played well against these teams that are ranked really high coming in here. So, and again, and, uh, you know, I know probably people are, are sick of hearing this, and it, it is about the team. And I heard Austin Allen say, you know, when I interviewed him after the game, he said, I'm not going to let this team quit. And beyond just that, I mean, again, there's guys that, are trying to put together good pieces of film against elite talent. So you talk about a guy like Cam Taylor Britt and, you know, another opportunity to put a great game on film against Ohio State and some of the best athletes in college football. You know, guys like Cam Taylor Britt and JoJo, I mean, there are still guys that are not only just thinking about, they want to win for Nebraska first and foremost, but they also are thinking about their future. And this is a huge opportunity, um, you know, for them to continue to, to make a statement for themselves personally against some elite talent and Ohio State has some elite talent Cam played really well Saturday he, yeah he did the, the, the wide receiver Bell is really good for Purdue and Cam I mean he had nine catches but the longest pass play of the game for Purdue was 21 yards the defense did a nice job other than the fact that and you know they couldn't get out the field a couple times they could not stop a drive and they didn't force any turnovers and those are two things that I know coach Janander Hopes to get better. We're going to hear some clips from him. He met with the media earlier today. We'll also hear from Matt Lubick. Uh, he met with the media today as well. And, and he got asked the, the question about, uh, you know, did you think about changing quarterbacks in this game? And, and I think the thought probably crossed their mind because Adrian just was having a tough day. Now, I will say this, Jessica, the four interceptions, one of them was, wasn't really on Adrian because he threw a pass to Austin. Austin caught it, took a couple steps, the hat hit the ball, the ball pops up in the air, and they get it, and they ruled it an uh, interception that really could have been a fumble, not, a, not an interception. But, and, and you mentioned Austin Allen. Boy, folks, if it doesn't touch your, your, your soul when you hear a kid say after the game, I let my team down, I let the state down, 
My goodness, that's a lot of burden for a 21, 22-year-old guy like Austin Allen to carry around on. I mean, he is he's he he wanted to be in a leadership role and he is taking that very very seriously and he wants that on his shoulders. He wants to, you know, be a guy that helps his team get in the win column and he's done so much positive throughout this entire year. I mean, you know, you hate that he's, you know, feels like it's all his fault, but cuz it's not all his fault, but you know, he that's I saw him walk out of the locker room and you know he said uh went up to Keith and hey where do you need me you know wanted to answer the questions was wanting to you know stand up there and ask you know take take responsibility for it and and also wanting to send send out the message hey we're gonna get back to it I promise I mean he's and I asked all of them you know did, did you feel like they this team was ready uh and they all said we were that they had a great week of practice a lot of energy and get and we're hearing it every week it's just not translating to wins but they, they prepared the right way so um yeah I mean you but you ha absolutely hate it for a guy like Austin Allen who um you know has has played so well this year and has been just such a a big piece of this team as a leader as a offensive threat and he's going to continue to do big things beyond just what he does here in Lincoln. Jojo I think uh, had some tears coming down his street his cheek when he talked to the media after the game and so you know so I saw some people go does it mean much to these guys yes it does it means a lot to these guys they've put a lot they've worked really hard and they're in every game again this was a game that didn't go their way but they were in this game and but the turnovers is just too much on our text line, John said, if our four-star quarterback out of, from a big-time school in Alabama and has been in the program for two years isn't ready to play yet, I worry about our quarterback's coach. Well, maybe, I, although, you know, the coaches see him every day. I think Logan's doing a good job. Coach Frost got asked about Logan yesterday. I think they, they feel like he's getting better, but I think they feel like Adrian's their best quarterback at this point in time. So uh, we'll continue to follow Follow this and see what happens. Adrian can't do that again, or, or you, you probably do have to take him out of the game. All right, 402-413-2400. Let's go to the phone. Let's go to Bob. Bob, you're up first tonight. Good evening. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same line as uh, the previous caller, the quarterback coach. Uh, I mean, we've seen a quarterback regress from his freshman year to his senior year. How much is that on the quarterback coach? And we don't have anybody else developed. It, it just seems like... Um, there's no uh, uh, learning coaching there, nothing getting better efficient there, and I, I think that's something you need to look at uh, next season. If you know if he's Frost is going to be back or not, it, it just that play there and a couple other positions. I won't say where on offense need to be addressed. I'll get off and listen to your thoughts. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks, Bob. I appreciate. It. Thanks for the phone call. Yeah, I think you know, I think the whole thing needs to be under invent, and I think Trev Alberts is doing that. I think he is. Looking at this thing with a fine-tooth comb, he's analyzing everything about what they're doing, why it isn't working, why we're losing these close games, and what is preventing us from getting there. And absolutely, I think every coach on that staff is going to have to probably uh, answer some questions when the season is over, uh, whether they, they're good enough to keep us moving forward. I, I think every coach on the staff probably knows they're on the hot seat a little bit right now. Well, yeah, I mean, we've heard Trev Albert say it since he was hired that we're in the business of winning. You know, that's that's the business that we're in, and you've got to find ways to get, you know, get in the win column. And But I will disagree a little bit. I wouldn't say that Adrian's regressed. No, I don't think that's fair. Because I think he's better this year than he was a year ago. Yeah. Uh, maybe he regressed from freshman to sophomore, sophomore, but I think he's better this season. Now, he played bad on Saturday. There's no denying it. He played bad. But there were there are a lot of games that Nebraska isn't in without two. Um, and it took, you know, there were some games that the O-line were was bad, you know, that was straight up bad, bad play from the offensive line that Adrian kind of kept the team in. So I don't know if I'd necessarily say, and, and Coach Lubick said it, I'm sure you have that cut lined up, that it's sad that all of it is being put on him. It, it's easy to, you know, point the point the blame on Saturday because he, he has been better. He's been improved in the turnover area, era, er, area this year, but you know those four turnovers. There's no excuses for it. There's and he. I don't think he's making any excuses. Right. You cannot turn the ball over four times like that. But to say that just he's completely regressed. You know, I, I don't know if I necessarily because I I think there have been times that he's played pretty well and he's still up at the top. And I know the stats don't matter if you don't find a way to win. 
But as far as stats go, he's still, you know, among, ranks among some of the top in the Big Ten and, and even in the country. Jessica, are we in some of these games without Adrian? I mean, that, I don't know that we are. I mean, he, he, he keeps us in games with plays, but he's not winning the games at the end. It's a really tough position to be in for the coaches because you can see what he does. You're like, wow, that was an unbelievable play. And then kind of when you need it to happen, it, it, it doesn't for him. Let's go to Omaha and Mike next. Good evening, Mike. Welcome to Sports Nightly. Hey, good evening. Good show. Hey, I wanted to ask, Mario Berdusco, is he on staff? Is he a consultant? It seems to be a lot of he and the quarterbacks talking in themselves in the, on the sidelines. Is he a staff member? Is he an assistant coach? And because he came hmm. here, they said, Scott said he was the quarterback guru. And it seems to be that a lot of this uh, may fall right back on his lap. Yeah, it could. That, that's a good point. You know, um, some people wonder, you know, Scott, since he was a former college quarterback, Mike, maybe, maybe he should run the quarterback room. Tom Osborne did that when, when Scott played here. That was his position coach was Tom Osborne, the head coach. So I, so is Verduzco the quarterback coach? Absolutely he yes. is. Absolutely, yes. Okay. So he is a, he's a paid assistant oh. coach. He's taken up a spot. He's one of the ten, correct. Okay. All right. That's what I needed to know. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. I like your show. Appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. Let's uh, head to Carney next and Randy. Good evening, Randy. Welcome to Sports Alley. Hey, how's it going? Good. Yeah, I don't know. You, you guys are talking about Adrian, and I don't know. Just I think he's got his head somewhere where it shouldn't be, to be honest with you. And he's just, I mean, you know, on that – Stepping out of bounds instead of taking a hit, really. On that, what was it? That third and five. Yeah, he, he should. He should have definitely reached the ball out. That was disappointing to see him not get that first down. I think that was the first drive of the second half. Yeah, and um, you know, I don't mean to go back into the past, but I mean, I I read something the other day or seen something that back in '03. When they fired Solich, I I forgot the AD's name. What was the name? Peterson. Peterson or something. Yep. Yeah. He said uh, he fired him because he didn't want uh, something like to see Nebraska football go into mediocrity or something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, the way they play now and the way they're doing that, it's way below mediocrity. And, you know, they, they lost all these uh, – one position games, <laughs> I got a feeling there's going to be way more than one, way more than one score this weekend. You know, I, really good. And when I seen it, and I was at the game, and when I seen, you know, 10, 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter, what I seen is they just, I think half, I think half the team quit, and you could tell the defense was taking plays off. So that's all I got. All right. I, I, I don't know that I'd go that far. I mean, the, the Huskers scored the last touchdown of the game. They tried the onside kick. I thought they were going to get it. I, I don't, you know, the, the defense held after one of the interceptions and, and forced a field goal try, which Purdue missed. I, I don't know that it's fair to say that this team quit. I, I wouldn't go down that path. I think that's, that's too, far, too far one direction. I was going to ask you, is there, do we know the uh, time of possession comparison in this, just in the second half? I know it's like total game, I, but. I will find that I during mean, the break. Because, because I can, yes. there were a couple of very, very quick drives, even that weren't interceptions that, and the defense was on the field for a long, long time on Saturday. But yeah, I mean, I, I talked to Luke Reimer, um, Nick Henrich, I mean, those two guys were devastated. I mean, just absolutely devastated. And I don't think you can you can say that uh, Luke Reimer quit on Saturday. I mean, he no, he put it all out there. Tackles. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think there and and you know Garrett Nelson is another guy that just looked absolutely just distraught. You know, there are some guys on that on the black shirts when they were leaving the locker room on Saturday that just looked absolutely just. So down. I mean, they were they were devastated. There was so no energy left in their bodies. I mean, it really wasn't. You you feel bad for the black shirts because you know at some point when the offense is turning it over and and yeah they would like to force those turnovers themselves. But 
you know, they just, I felt like they left everything out there. I, I mean, in my opinion, I, I don't know, you know, um, I didn't watch every single snap because I was doing uh, other things, but the uh, it would be interesting to see what they graded out. But it, it appeared to me that they left everything out there. Here, was, here were the drives in the second half, Jessica, for Nebraska. Three plays, uh, two plays, three plays, four plays, three plays, one play, three plays. Those are their drives. Yeah. And then they had the long one that they scored. When I was trying to look at when we were talking earlier about just the, and the time, the time that they even had the ball. It was like less than two minutes uh, on a lot of those, too, that they, they even had possession of the ball. So right. it was um, quick back out, you know, defense get back out there. And, yeah, it was uh, – it didn't seem like Nebraska, the Nebraska offense was on the field long. And, he, and when, they were, then when they did score, they scored pretty fast. Right. Buckle up. Put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Just getting the hour underway. Again, our volleyball show with John Cook coming up at the top of the hour. 402-413-2400. They have revealed the first playoff poll. Not good news for Cincinnati. We'll recap that for you and take more of your calls and comments next. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto family kickoff contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign-on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Tailgating pros agree that Lucille's famous fried chicken and more at Sap Brothers scores big with Husker fans. Be the MVP of your tailgate party this year and let Lucille's do the cooking. Stop by Sap Brothers Travel Center or visit www.sapbros.net to find out how you can elevate your tailgate party with Lucille's famous fried chicken. Celebrating 50 years of fueling America's heartland and welcoming guests. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official sponsor of Husker Athletics. Whether you compete on the court, at the track, on the field, or in the field, winning isn't just a goal. It's a mindset shaped, honed, and defined throughout the season. That's why farmers pushing themselves to be the best plant DeKalb brand corn. Wherever you compete, winning has roots. Perform at your best with DeKalb. Always read and follow grain marketing and all other stewardship practices and pesticide label directions. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Momentum. It's building at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. With game-changing work in precision agriculture, nanoscience, and digital humanities. We're unlocking mysteries in brain research, solving the impossible with remote surgery using robots. And we're creating bold futures with world-leading research in early childhood education. We don't slow down, and we're not letting up. We are Nebraska. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. You train for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. 
We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day, because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. Whew. Sometimes being an office printer feels like I'm competing in an Olympic sport. Thankfully, I have Marco's managed print services on my team. Marco's game plan helps me make big plays while saving big bucks. And Marco's lightning fast tech support gets me back in the game fast. <sighs> I'm up. Find out what your printers could be saying with Marco's managed print services at marconet.com. Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. Chevy, find new roads. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. We're back inside of our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every field. The first college football playoff poll is out. Georgia won, no surprise. Bama, two. I am surprised by that. They have a loss. Their best win is over Ole Miss, who's not in the top ten. Michigan State's three. They're undefeated. They just beat Michigan. I don't think they stay there. You have a problem with number four. Oregon's at four. Yeah, I don't, like, I, I get that they're probably putting a lot of stock in what Oregon did over Ohio State, but that's a different Ohio State team that Oregon beat than what is playing right now. They've got a lot of things figured out. Oregon did not look good. They lost to Stanford. How is that a good loss? If you want to talk about quote-unquote good losses. And yeah. then they looked really bad against Cal. And then I also have a problem with... Um, you know, Alabama's lost. There's too much stock being put in Texas A&M, which I've said from the summer when they were ranked too high. So it just, again, the it's so, this thing always drives me bonkers because it's like, it, it's so frustrating and it never will stay this way. But I also, there's, right. there still is not a lot of transparency into why they put teams where they put them. And, and too bad for Cincinnati, man. They're going to have a hard time if people don't lose in front of them, which yeah. I do think, I, I think you're right. I don't think Michigan State stays there, but will whoever you know whoever beats michigan state will they just jump you know jump right over cincinnati or cincinnati kind of locked in there i don't i think that was a pretty big statement right there putting cincinnati at six you thought oklahoma was going to be in the top four with an undefeated team but then that if they stay undefeated they'll keep moving up the buckeyes who we play saturday is number five since he is six they got to be disappointed undefeated they played their best games already with notre dame and uh, they beat um, Indiana, and they've got some good wins, but they're six. Michigan fell to seventh, or is it seventh? You mentioned Oklahoma eight, Wake is nine, Notre Dame ten. There's your top ten. So. And, and the teams that, um, you know, are, will fall out um, will just jump Cincinnati. It's not they like will. Cincinnati's going to move up. You're right. They'll, they'll move ahead of Cincinnati, which to me, like you said, it's probably this means Cincinnati, unless some crazy stuff happens, is not getting into the college football playoff. Dale, on our text line in Hastings, Adrian hasn't regressed. He just hasn't improved to the point where he has eliminated the turnovers, Dale and Hastings. Yeah, I kind of agree. He really had done a good job limiting the turnovers until Saturday. Saturday really reared its ugly head. Up until that point, he'd only thrown three picks. 
until that game, but it was bad. And, and a couple of those were the one at Oklahoma was a good decision. It was. Just <laughs> it was try, like to, a, try to score at the end of the half or something. Just it was fourth it, down. Yeah, yeah, it was fourth, fourth down, down, and it ended up uh, it was the interception that was a crazy interception that Oklahoma wanted yeah. it to not yeah. count because it pinned Oklahoma back at the end zone. So really, so. you only had a problem with the two intercept, but he had the fumble at Illinois that yeah. was scooping scored on there too. Let's go to uh, Minnesota and Tim. Good evening, Tim. Welcome to the program. Hi. Um, it's good to finally be able to talk. I tried to avoid as much of the negativity as I could because, you know, we just we just don't need that. There's enough around. Uh, I would say what frustrated me the most, and I don't know if I'd say blame, but the thing that I seemed to be the biggest problem in my eyes was not maybe as much of Adrian, maybe even more so, was what the defense was allowing. And even, even when we were – Playing well um, in the first half, the 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 defense even had struggled to to get done what they did. Um, now I will grant that they did play well at times, but that's to me, that to me was probably the biggest disappointment I'd say throughout the whole game. I can understand also um, why some people may have thought that the team quit that previous caller. However, I agree with you that the team did not, but I think the thing that would make people think that they did, one thing, you know, the, how the defense is showing no signs until maybe the last few drives was stopping Purdue, but also just when they heard about that bad body language, uh, that's, that seems to be a surefire way. Heck, I even thought, one, wondered for a moment if the team was quitting against Illinois early last year. So, uh, but I don't think I don't, I don't think they quit. But it certainly, uh, it, it, for a while, maybe started to look like they were like they were. And also, I'm wondering what Adrian was seeing in that first one on that pick six. It's, I'm wondering if his biggest mistake was just. Not surveying the 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 whole field. Uh, apparently, he didn't see that guy, and I'm wondering if he just you know drops it, does the check down. So it seems like there were some other things going around in my mind, but those would be the main things for now. All right, thanks, Sam. Appreciate the call. Yeah, the first interception, he he was a quick read. It was a quick throw in the flat, and the linebacker just made a really good play, and Adrian didn't see him. That that happens sometimes in football. It was really costly. I really hated the one he had in the third quarter when he tried to shovel pass and Nebraska's at the ball at the Purdue 41, still with the lead in the game. That one, to me, was a real real bad one. And then he sailed a throw that the safety was able to make an inter- easy interception on. Let's, uh, Tim, let's, uh, let's do some little bit cuts here before we get to the next break. The offensive coordinator talked a little bit about some of this, including a play that we have not talked about yet here tonight, and that was the play near the end of the first half when the Oscars got the stop near midfield on fourth down, had about a minute to go in the half, Oscars took that shot on first down. Samore had beaten the coverage deep, and Adrian misfired on him. Here's Matt Lubick talking about that play. Could have been a little more catchable, you know, and uh, I also think um, uh, it, it was catchable to some point. But the same thing, when, when you got a guy, I, I think it was three yards of separation, you know, give or take a yard. It's pretty, I mean, the whole stadium saw you pretty open. I mean, th- those are the ones you just want to complete, you know. And, uh, and we, and we got to complete those. Could he have made the catch? Yeah, and he'll say that too. Um, and so it's kind of a, you, mean, you, don't, you, don't, you don't, you're not blaming anybody. It's just like, hey, we got we to complete that. We got to make it a little bit better, give him a little better chance. And at the end of the day, we got to make the catch. I want your reaction on this because my, my reaction at the time was that it should have been caught. Maybe, maybe he has to die for it to make the catch, but he should have made the catch. Uh, and the throw could have been better, too. But I thought Samori should have made the catch. I think Samori would absolutely tell you he should have made the catch. That he's that kind of receiver that no matter what, he, he I, I mean, I've talked to him several times. I'll bet he beat himself up for that. I'll bet he really, you know, was disappointed that he didn't make that catch and felt like no excuses being made. But it's, I mean, it's like a baseball player out there in outfield, outfield when you just, that sometimes that happens when you just lose it in the sun a little bit. They were talking a lot about that on the, on the uh, TV broadcast as well. Just, um, but you know, again, that's part of playing outside and you got to be able to overcome that. And so I, I think Samori would absolutely say, and I think he did. He said that that's on me. My bad. I should have had that ball. Yeah. Big play. We're up three. Could have been up 10 at halftime, but 
it was not. Okay, so a lot of people say, why, why isn't Logan Smothers playing? Why wasn't Logan Smothers put into the game? Matt Lubick was asked about Smothers' development and, and how he looks at all the blame that is being directed at the quarterback right now. Well, first off, going to the question about Logan, you know, I, I see just with maturity, I see a consistency and experience and confidence all coming together with him. Uh, just because he's, you know, if you're two in a program, um, he's, he's got some vital game reps. So he just keeps improving. He keeps improving. Um, you know, we talk about changing the quarterback. We, we got a lot of confidence in, a, in Adrian Martinez. And it's, a, it's an unfortunate thing, you know, when, when you're losing uh, the, the quarterback, you know, it takes a lot of blame. And, and it's, that's football, but it's, it's really unfair because it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's him, it's, it's everybody. It's, you know, it's first, we look at ourselves as coaches. Okay. And, then, and then it's every position, you know, and, and, and making sure uh, that, you know, he has the, the guys around him doing the right things and putting him in the best position so he can be successful. Um, you know, he's made a lot of plays this year um, to help us move the football, you know. Um, and he's, he's made some mistakes, too, just like everybody else. Uh, but that's, that's kind of the I, I get it's the nature of the position, and, he's, and he handles it like a champ. But, but Adrian Martinez is our quarterback, and, and that's what we're going with. So there you go. There's, there's uh, Matt Lubick's comments about Adrian and wh how Logan's doing. And Up until Saturday, I don't think there's any question. You keep rolling with Adrian, but Saturday was rough. It was. It makes you question that a little bit. Yeah, and I mean, it just is so deflating. You know, you, you keep turning the ball over and you're not putting points on the board. And Tim was talking about the defense kind of staying out, you know, on the field so much. I, it's just at some point it's got to be just – so absolutely your confidence is shook you're okay here we go again you know I mean it's when you can't um you're just so quickly running back out there and the offense isn't doing their job and it's a team sport and they'll say that every single week but at some point when you know the defenses keep running at, just keeps running out there after turnovers it's gotta be deflating yeah absolutely yep. deflating yep all right, a, uh, our Sports Island Hotline, which you folks have been burning up here tonight. We love it. Brought to you by the Woodhouse Auto Family Shop Woodhouse. First, 18 brands, 16 convenient locations. Simplified car buying to save you time. Shop finance. Buy online at woodhouse.com. More of the show coming up. A DUI is everything you didn't prepare for. You did not save for it. You did not train for it. You did not go to school for it. You did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it. It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Well, it's halftime. How do we kill 15 minutes? I think I have some really old hard candies in my purse. Ick. Well, it could play rock, paper, scissors. I'd rather eat the hard candy. Oh, I forgot. I bought a bunch of Nebraska Lottery scratch tickets before we came. Excellent. Hand them down. What a great selection. The Nebraska Lottery launches new scratch games every month. Anybody got a quarter to scratch them with? Anybody? Hey, hand me one of those old hard candies. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. At Subaru, they love building vehicles for those who pack a lot into life. The redesigned 2021 Crosstrek is their way of saying more power to you. An upgrade in horsepower means you have a world of fun and adventure waiting for you. And the Crosstrek comes with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. Love, it's what makes Subaru, Subaru. Visit Deto Subaru at 27th Street and Jamie Lane in Lincoln or at DetoSubaru.com. Upgraded horsepower available on select models. This holiday season, give the gift of good taste with a gift card from Valentino's. During double discount days, double your discount from $5 to $10 free with a $50 gift card purchase. Valentino's handcrafted pizza has been a family favorite for generations, and our gift cards make the perfect holiday gift. And right now, during gift card double discount days, when you buy $50 in gift cards, get a $10 gift card free. Happy holidays from Valentino's. Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic for better health. Why chiropractic? Because it is safe, drug-free, and a cost-effective treatment option for back and joint pain. Plus, all generations can benefit from natural chiropractic care. Choose chiropractic first for pain relief, nutrition, or to improve your mobility, athletic performance, or overall wellness. Make chiropractic your first choice for better health. Find a chiropractic physician near you at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. 
Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From sprains and stitches to sore throats and sinus infections, when it's care that can't wait, count on CHI Health Clinic Priority Care. Simply walk in seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You'll get the quality care you need without an appointment and you'll never pay more than a regular primary care visit. Get in, get out, and get on with your day. Find a location near you at chihealth.com slash priority care. Looking for a great Christmas gift idea? Look no further than expanding your loved one's Husker closet with an item from the new 255 collection, inspired by legendary coach Tom Osborne. With high quality at the forefront, 255 can be worn anywhere from sporting events and business meetings to backyard get-togethers. No matter the occasion, 255 is about feeling confident, looking good, and celebrating the remarkable coaching career of Tom Osborne. Shop now at Huskers.com or participating retailers. For more information, visit Huskers.com slash 255. You could win a 2021 Ford F-150 XL four-wheel drive Super Crew truck from the Woodhouse Auto family this season. If the Huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown, Woodhouse will give away an F-150. New contestants will be chosen each week. For details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that, and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. Here is a before winter to-do list from JTEC Construction. Let's start with windows. Triple pane window technology has saved homeowners countless dollars on heating and cooling bills. Siding serves a crucially important purpose, protecting your home and insulating it from adverse weather conditions. And don't forget about your roof. Designing your roof should be simple and painless, and JTEC offers several payment plan options. One more thing on your to-do list called JTEC Construction, the official exterior experts of the Huskers. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addy's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and a new flagship capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addy's. Addy Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addy Sports Bar and Grill, see you there for the game. The season share Valentino's tailgater tradition with our big red double jumbo deal and get two one topping jumbo pizzas for only $17.79 each. Order yours online at Valentino's.com. Valentino's, it's the official pizza of the Huskers. Go big red. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cooney with you for a few more minutes. Our volleyball show for the week coming up at the top of the hour. John Bader, John Cook will talk Husker volleyball. They got two road matches against ranked teams this week, 25th ranked. Illinois Thursday, and then at Ohio State Saturday night, the Buckeyes in the top 10. 402-413-2400, the number. Let's go to the phones. Pete and West Point up next. Good evening, Pete. Good evening. How are you doing? Good. I guess a couple things that concern me, and, and you probably disagree. Uh, when, Tom, or when Scott Frost, after the game, said that uh, he when he got on Adrian because he wasn't really running hard to get the first down, but that might have affected Adrian for the rest of the team mentally, for the rest of the game mentally. That bothers me. That shows me that our quarterback is mentally a little bit uh, on edge or, or weak. Uh, the second part is I don't blame Adrian. Uh, I do think part of the problem on the offense, when it comes to getting first downs, 
he has a tendency, if he can run for it and make sure he gets a first down, he has a tendency not to do that. He has a tendency to, to stand back there and throw. And, and first downs have got to be priority number one uh, for the quarterback position. And I think if they're going to get the offense flowing, I think he's got to start running and do some runs and open up the pass game. If he would, if he would run and get some of those runs, the receivers would be more wide open. Um, but I just I don't blame Adrian. I think it's coaching. I think they really need to look at the quarterback coach because I haven't seen a lot of uh, progression out of the quarterback position. Um, and if Adrian gets hurt, you know, is Logan Smothers ready? He should be ready. The coach should have him ready, but uh, it's a big question mark. No, fair point. Thank you, Pete. Appreciate the phone call. And that kind of weaves into what Doug and Norfolk on our text line said. Things we look at as a fan base, Martinez's best asset are his legs. Last few losses, it's like they're telling him not to run. It should be if your first couple options to pass aren't there, run. And I think he was, he was gimpy in Minnesota, so he was not probably able to do some of that. He was fine Saturday. He, he could do anything they wanted him to do on the offense. But, Pete, I'm going to go to your point. Jessica, I want you to uh, sound off on this as well. I don't think he is a very confident quarterback, and how can he be? Because we've not won games. And when you don't win and you don't put together a winning drive late in the game week after week after week, you're not going to be a confident player. It's like missing a bunch of last-second shots in basketball. You're not going to be really excited to take that shot the next time. Yeah, I mean, he absolutely needs to find a way to win one of these. And, and yeah. you know, I think for the whole team, and we heard Coach Frost talk about it, you know, a lot of times you, you get you string a couple together, that's when the confidence really comes. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think – We've said it, and, you know, at, at uh, Minnesota, maybe he wasn't healthy. But, again, you know, in another time where he, you know, doesn't find a way to kind of help his team win, and it wasn't all on him. But, you know, absolutely, I think you – you there's no doubt – I mean, there, doubt creeps in at that point. There, You just – it's human nature that doubt is going to come when you're not finding ways to win. But Adrian's got to be able to run the football. I mean, that's what makes him so dangerous. That's what makes – that's what makes this offense go right it is how he can utilize his feet and we've heard it week in and week out and you know how many times you know opposing teams and their you know defensive coordinators talk about how a nightmare it is to prepare for his feet and and that is what opens everything up so he's absolutely got to be his feet have, his legs have got to be utilized they do and he did get chewed on when he didn't reach out and get that first down on that first drive at the second. And he should have. That's that's fine. I have no problem with Coach Frost getting in his ear and going, "Dude, you got to. You know, you see the marker. Get to the marker." I was, I'm kind of surprised by that. Like I was honestly more surprised that he doesn't didn't get that first down than maybe a couple of those interceptions that he threw because. It's like that's not something that we haven't – that's not something we've seen from Adrian. I don't feel like the, this year is not kind of, you know, laying it all out on the line to get, you know, the, those kinds of plays. I just dropped a dude on Sports <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right, hey, buckle up. Put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Need to take a break. Final few minutes of the show. Still time for you to jump on board. 402-413-2400. We'll finish it off next. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. Walk these fields for 85 years. Grow deeper roots here. Know what thrives here. Bring in world-class genetics and innovative traits like chrome triple stack corn hybrids and Enlist E3 soybeans. Refine it through pure local know-how and expertise. Do all of that and the only thing left is the right seed. Hogemeyer. Learn more at therightseed.com. From vintage sneakers to bacon-scented soap to water fountains for your pet, all can be had with a few simple clicks. Problem is, you never really know what you're going to get until they show up at your door. Introducing Ford Blue Advantage. It's used car buying that's built for you. Not only can you shop for used vehicles online, in person, or both, you can also test drive before you buy, so you know exactly what you're getting. 
Plus, get history reports, vehicle inspections, Ford warranties, and the expertise of factory trained techs. Visit FordBlueAdvantage.com today. Valley 365 is here, and the time is now to take your farming technology full circle. Valley 365 is the ultimate command center, the new single sign on platform that brings together our tried and true technology and streamlines your entire operation. Combining the best features of AgSense, Valley Scheduling, Valley VRI, and Valley Insights, Valley 365 is the next level solution for connected crop management. Leverage your data, make the most of your time, and own your tomorrow. Contact your Valley dealer today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day, because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. It's game on at Sid Dillon Buick GMC Cadillac in Fremont, featuring our winning combination of Buick SUVs and GMC trucks and SUVs. And as a GMC Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles for your business needs. For the convenient and easy way to shop for your next vehicle, just visit our Fremont location or check out our full inventory at Sid Dillon Buick GMC.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. We are professional grade. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres Equipment, Nebraska Premier John Deere Dieter with 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres Solutions for every feel. Let's head to the phones. Drew in Loomis is up next. Good evening, Drew. Hey, Greg. How are you guys doing? Good. Thank you. Good. Hey, appreciate the show. Enjoy listening to it. Um, hey, a couple weeks ago, uh, there was a caller that called in and I'm not sure his approach was right, but he, he talked after the Michigan game about um, three things, or maybe I can't remember which game it was, but he called in pretty upset, and he, he asked you to name three things that uh, Scott Frost has done really well or improved upon, since, or the team's improved upon since he's came here. And I think he was probably maybe out of line, so he didn't answer the question, but um, I, I guess it sparked an interest in me. So some of my friends and I have talked about this. It's like, what have we done better since since? Scott Frost has taken over four years ago. You know, we've had excuses about the culture. We've had excuses about uh, recruiting. We've had multiple excuses of different reasons why we haven't been successful. And now we're three and six. We're 15 point dogs this week. We're probably going to be three and seven, most likely be a three and nine team. And the record reflects what you are. What, what has he done well since he's been here? What does he need to improve on so that we don't continually, you know, talk this way and have this, you know, yeah. Well, it just seems like every week is this way. But, yeah, if you could uh, yep. maybe give your – I'd appreciate it. Sure will, Drew. Yeah, I think there's no doubt the strength and conditioning program is markedly better since the staff took over. I think that they are now physically can go toe-to-toe with teams in the, around the country. I don't think that was the case before this staff got there. This team has been in every game this season. That wasn't happening a couple of years ago, so I think that would be another thing. And I think defensively, they've lifted themselves up to the top 25 programs in the country defensively. So there's your three. Hope that helped, Drew. Appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. John Bader, John Cook coming up next. We've got some volleyball chatter coming our way. All right, let's do that. Yes, and call us tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow. We will be back tomorrow night with uh, more Sports Nightly. Uh, so quick hour tonight. Got game six of the uh, Major League Baseball. I think it might end tonight. I think the Braves might finish off the Astros tonight. But volleyball chatter with the Johns coming your way next. Hang around. up on the text line text 402-413-2400 with your husker thoughts you could win a 2021 ford f-150 xl four-wheel drive super crew truck from the woodhouse auto family this season if the huskers return the first or second half opening kick for a touchdown woodhouse will give away an f-150 new contestants will be chosen each week for details on how to enter the Woodhouse Auto Family Kickoff Contest and official rules, go to woodhousekickoff.com. That's woodhousekickoff.com. 
Freddy Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team. www.iowaworks.gov. Business Technology 1, Network Downtime 0. Being a game-winning IT network takes hard work and an experienced technology coach. That's why our game plan includes Marco. Marco helps our entire business infrastructure perform better and score big day in and day out. With Marco's veteran experience guiding our team, every season is a winning season. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com.
Live from the Acres Broadcast Center inside East Stadium, this is the Nebraska Volleyball Show. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Three ball from Kaylee, just over it drops! Kaylee Okada, a two-hander, three ball, and Wisconsin decided to play some campfire defense. Bad pass, Minnesota, set to the back right, Samini, she's blocked! More blocks than a preschool. That was Maddie Kubik. Katie Myers line drives it right to Kubik. Perfect pass. Attack in the middle. Keila Caffey. Kaboom. She's waking babies all over the Twin Cities. Huskers run the slide. Warren Stevens bombs it off the block and out. We're tied at six. Set five. Cardiologist passing out business cards. Here's your host, John Baylor, on the Huskers Radio Network. Greetings, Nebraska. Hello, hello, and welcome to your Nebraska Volleyball Show. Back at its regular time, Tuesdays, Central Time, 7 until 8. We're going to have the head coach here of Nebraska Volleyball for the next hour, and you as well, 402-413-2400. That's 402-413-2400. The Big Red has dropped two in a row each last week, losing two deuce games to Wisconsin at home and getting swept that evening on Wednesday night. And then at Minnesota Saturday night, the Huskers storm back and win the second 30-28. to Another deuce game win in the fourth, 25-23, but ultimately drop it 15-9 to Minnesota. That was the seventh five-set match for Nebraska at Minnesota in their last eight. The last eight matches at the Maturity Pavilion. Seven of them have gone five. The Huskers have won four of those and now dropped three of them. Just stunning drama whenever those two teams surround a net, especially up there. By virtue of those two losses, the Big Red now 10-2 and two in the conference. But, hey, still tied for first place. Thank you, Purdue. Upset win against Wisconsin. Also, the Badgers now 10-2. and two. The Big Red 16-5. and five. Forget about a get-well game. Schedule not treating the Big Red well at Illinois Thursday night. What's Illinois done of late? Well, they just defeated Penn State on the road in four, and the Illini has won four in a row. Wrong time to travel to Huff Hall in Champaign-Urbana. And then, 48 hours later, Saturday night, Nebraska's at Ohio State. Ohio State's lost four overall this year, but listen to the team's they have fallen to at Purdue in five, at Penn State in three, and more recently at Minnesota and at Wisconsin. Each of those took four. Ohio State very much a top-tier uh, volleyball team this season, not just in the conference but nationally, and they've got some sights, their sights on a Final Four. So Nebraska at Illinois Thursday night. That's an 8 o'clock start central, 7.30 airtime with the 30-minute pregame. Yours truly and Lauren Cook-West. And then on Saturday night, 6 o'clock, early start, 5.30 pregame, yours truly, and Lauren. 402-413-2400. I'm John Baylor. Here he is, the head coach of Nebraska Volleyball, John Cook. Good evening. Hey, JB. How you doing? I'm well. I appreciate the interest. How about yourself? Well, it's election day, so I've been looking for a place to vote, but I can't find any. We were told we couldn't practice today because it's an election day. So I'm kind of lost right now. So maybe something down the Haymarket will have some voting booth or something. I don't know. There are many elections when more than 50% of adults choose not to vote. And here you are on a day that's not an election day. You're trying to exercise your right to vote. Well, that's what we're supposed to do because we can't, according yeah. to the NCAA, we're not allowed to practice today. Sure. So we're supposed to go and vote. But so I'm telling our team, like, if I find a place to vote, I'll let you know. Maybe the team is just spending the day thoughtfully contemplating this right that has been endowed now to all American citizens and since 1920, all women. Uh, yeah, I think our team is spending the day tanning and, and getting their nails done. The thinking you can do in a tanning booth, <laughs> that's when deep thoughts often happen. Now, your DNA profile is under assault, but deep thoughts... Presumably, there are some synapses firing. You ever been in a tanning booth? 
a, a, one year before we were going to Hawaii, I went in there just to get my skin acclimated to get to Hawaii so you I wouldn't thought, get sunburned. You thought the tanning booth would be health providing? That's what everybody was saying. This was, this was back in like 2007, eight, And I went in there a few times and I felt kind of like, your, smells like your skin was burning. <laughs> but Sometimes smells are not deceiving. Right. Yeah. So anyway, I, I did it. That's the only time I've been is, is uh, trying to get my skin acclimated so we, you know, we can get sunburned in Hawaii. But don't knock the social benefits. Yeah. Boy, I mean, people call me Casper, so I don't really know what it's like uh, on the other side of that wall. Meanwhile, you seem to be doing okay after a rugged trip to the Twin Cities. Well, it was a great match. You know, we won two very close games. We lost a couple close games, and then... Nine, nine in the fifth. I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that, and we gave up six, so it was disappointing how we finished. But uh, good effort by our team, and I think, uh, you know, they're learning. I mean, here's the bottom line, JB. We're going into week seven of the Big Ten. If you would have told me after the Louisville match, in seven weeks, we're going to be tied for first in the Big Ten, sixth in the in – the, uh, Selection show seedings at this date. <laughs> but, Coach, consider the context. If I had told you we'd still have a program after the Louisville match, you'd True. be very True. pleased. Yeah, I mean, that was a tough night. It's a good thing that next week we're going to talk about people getting fired. And I mean, I, I sh we probably should have been eliminating coaches and re retooling the whole thing. But Those things happen. Plus, yeah. Louisville, something happened to them. Well, it's called they're number Russell. one. They're number one. They're number one in the, in the reveal show, yeah. yeah. Right now, if we started the NCAA tournament today, they would be the number one seed. Louisville. I'm just yeah. learning how to pronounce the city, and they're now number one in the doggone standings. Yeah, yeah. And don't even try that pronunciation west of Omaha. Yeah. Louisville. Same spelling. Oh. Thank me later. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> uh, do you agree with me? It's Louisville, Texas, and Wisconsin, well, and they, everybody else. They pronounce Louisville. He has a way to say Louisville. That's what Louisville. I, I may not have that exactly right, but ask Kenzie right. Maloney. She'll she always would correct me on that. Co coaches, Louisville. One reason I'm a fan, besides Danny being their head coach, the pride of Adams, Nebraska. Muhammad Ali's grandson is part of the Louisville women's volleyball program. Correct. He does. What do you call it? Uh, website and also uh, social media social media director you, that's yeah. what I'm looking for videos yeah the old days yeah. we would talk now forget that yeah. Dude, that's old fashioned that yeah. dates us right there yeah no that's pretty cool Muhammad yes. Ali's the greatest city in the world Louisville I tried to tell Kentucky. him look I really admired your grandfather he's like I've heard it before you, yeah. you can save it yeah <laughs> you're, not, you're not the first jump in line <laughs> so anyway Louisville, Texas, Wisconsin, and everybody else, am I about right? Uh, you mean as far as, as... As far as the favorites, at, you know, two-thirds of the way through the regular well, season. Well, I think you got to... Okay, I, I, would, I would throw Minnesota in there. Really? In the inner I would, circle? I would throw Nebraska in there. I would throw Ohio State in there. I would throw Purdue in there. Pittsburgh. Um, okay, we haven't even got to the Pac-12 yet. UCLA is leading the Pac-12 right now. Mac May. Yeah, Mac May for her at a Dubuque. 19th year. Yeah, yeah at a Dubuque. She, uh, she started with Troy Aikman. They overlapped. Yeah. Aikman and Mac May. Yeah. And, and the SEC, you got, don't forget Kentucky. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not even, there's a yeah, lot of good teams. But you don't think there are multiple tiers. I agree. They're, they're all strong. Every, and everyone there has got a puncher's chance and a solid chance. And we've got another month when things are going to change. But yep. as we speak, if the final, if the, Tournament began in November rather than December. Do you think those three have kind of separated themselves a little bit? Well, I, you know, we haven't played Texas, so I don't know. But, you know, from last year, they're really good. Um, Louisville was best team we've played all year. So, yeah, they're legit. And Wisconsin, I mean, we just beat Purdue. Purdue just beat them. Um, we lost two deuce games at Wisconsin, you know, and we gave, you know, we had so many opportunities we didn't take advantage of. So um, it's, it's on any given night right now. And then Wisconsin drops a four gamer to Purdue. Yeah. That one really yeah. surprised so, me. And, you know, and Wisconsin lost to Maryland, who we, who we got coming up here. I mean, Maryland's, whoever thought Maryland would be six and six right now in the Big Ten? And they played a pretty tough 
round of teams. This is becoming a Louisville fan club show, but when I look at Louisville, yeah, they've got a lot of talent, but they've got this cohesiveness and yep. this chemistry and this senior leadership. If you're looking at a team and you're trying to assess talent versus chemistry, is it 80-20, 90-10, or is it like 60-40? Well, you got to have talent, but um, you know if you've you got if you have good chemistry, they're playing well. I mean, Kentucky team was that way. Our 2008 team was that way, um, but they've got a setter who's doing a nice job. They get her the ball. They got some hitters that can kill it, and then they they just play really hard, and um, they're tough. So uh, they got a great combination. Kentucky was a lot like that last year. You look at Kentucky; they weren't the most physical team. But they were quick and they had a great setter and a great libero. It, when you look at the Kentucky-Texas championship match, it was a ton of talent versus a fair amount of talent. Yeah. And then good chemistry versus amazing. Yeah. Just complementary pieces. Yeah. So anyway. That's, that's what we're all striving for is to create a team like that. It's all qualitative. It's difficult to quantify. But when you look at this team's chemistry, uh, how how strong do you think it is for Nebraska? We're building. We're building. You know, you got, you got to remember, John. Okay, I just told you if you'd have told me that after we lost at Louisville. We are starting three freshmen. Wisconsin had six super seniors out there at one time. Yeah. Those are fifth year. Those, those are 23 year olds, and we've got 18 year olds. They're you know are still talking about showing prom pictures. And they got players that are looking for financial advisors yeah. and you know assisted living opportunities. Yeah. Agents. <laughs> I mean, pretty soon we're going to have working yeah. moms on these on the, in these teams, and maybe you know assisted living and having something. There are some older players this year. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we're we're building, and um, you know, we at times we can play really good volleyball. It's just the question is, can we do it down the next four weeks here and see what kind of run we can make? You've got two things, I presume that are your focus. I presume there's a ton of overlap. One is win the Big Ten potentially, and two is be the best version of yourself come December, as Nebraska right. so often is, with presumably those three programs, Louisville, Texas, and uh, Wisconsin, as your measuring sticks. Like you, When you step in against Wisconsin again in December, the goal is hopefully that rather than perhaps the feeling going in last week, you're at least equal footing and in no way an underdog. Well, that's what, that's what we're shooting for, yeah. We've got a lot of work to do to get to that point and, and do it for two and a half, three hours. Um, so, uh, but that's, that's why we have the season. That's why we train and, um, you know, we keep working at it. Now, today you didn't see the players because they were focused on election day right. and, and their rights as women yeah. for and the we, last hundred years were, they've had right. that ability we were, to vote. We were one of the few teams that were focused on that because apparently a lot of teams got waivers so they could practice today. So, really? Yeah. We, we, we missed that. Who's in charge of the deal. waiver appeals? Within the Nebraska volleyball program, well, we, we got the memo last week what you had to do to apply for a waiver. And okay, so you had to have two student athletes write a letter why you should, uh, why you need to two practice. Two of them. That's a good exercise. Yeah. Trev Alberts had to write a letter. He's a busy guy. Yeah. So I really don't want to bother him with yeah. that. You had to do an educational deal, video, take him somewhere that day, or schedule something later. I found out some some teams will schedule stuff in the spring, civic awareness stuff. Sure, that's important. Um, uh, there's there, more. There We're was, not done. There was more. Yeah, there there's was more. more. That's it's just the checklist. The checklist. Uh, I think I had to write a letter. So I'm like, okay, they're going to make us do all this. Do they really want us to practice? Well, apparently, I was just reading in the D1 ticker earlier, about an hour ago, when I was having dinner, that over a hundred waivers were granted today as an estimate. How about now, I don't know how many were in volleyball, but that was 100. I just know the schools I contacted were all practicing today. How about Illinois and Ohio State? <laughs> I'm hoping their legs are focused on elections I today. Didn't, I didn't co contact okay. them. But what was, what was interesting was, you know, this whole thing, I'm making fun of it because it, it's a farce. And the whole thing was set up to really focus on election. Great. We, we can do that, and we got people who can help us with that. And if we had an election, we could certainly talk about that. The problem is Nebraska doesn't have an election right now. Uh, but that was the whole point of the NCAA making this rule. And now you give all these waivers, so, and they, you know, it was adamant in the, the 
head of the SAC committee, he's a student athlete from Rutgers, I think he's a football player, just said, like, okay, why are we doing this if we're not going to commit everybody to it? And it's unfair if some schools sure. get to practice and some don't. Now, we play Thursday, and you'll notice tomorrow there'll be no Big Ten matches. But we, we're the first Big Ten match to play. Coming right up. And we're coming right up. So, uh, it sounds like and I, I, know, I know Louisville, for example, play, plays Friday, uh, but they got a waiver. So anyway, this whole thing is, again, the, the NCAA is, is uh, I think in some ways, embarrassing themselves, you know, making these rules and then not enforcing them. And you know, this is like going back to Brianna Holman. You know, everybody gets releases, and then, you know, LSU doesn't release Brianna Holman. I mean, it's just like, are you kidding me? You know, can we just make rules for everybody or... Just let it, let it be the wild, wild now, west. Coach, one of my roles on this program is to keep you from getting in trouble. <laughs> so we probably want to move on from any more commentary regarding the NCAA. But it sounds like your recommendation, humbly expressed, would be do it on a federal election day, which would mean every other November. Maybe that would be more sensible. And, uh, but I do admire the Big Ten for not scheduling matches on Wednesday. Because I'm thinking, like, what if, what if you're playing Wednesday and you can't practice the day before? But they adjusted the schedule. That's why, well, we're playing Thursday because they moved it from TV. And, but everybody else will be playing Friday, Saturday. So, um, If you had seen your team today, and you did see them yesterday, what can you do to make sure they're not deflated after what has been a couple of matches when my guess is they're disappointed? Uh, we... we uh, just, uh, you know, what I take from uh, the Navy SEALs and the Blue Angel pilots, I've hung with the SEALs, I've flown with the Blue Angels, you know, they, they do their exercise, their mission, their flight, their deal, they go back, they debrief, they evaluate it, and they figure out how they're going to be better on the next one. And that's how we approach things, and that's in, in our culture. So we don't get too up, too down. This is what we got to do better. Here's where we, we met, you know, could have done better. Um, first thing is start by serving over the net. would be a good, great start. And we had a great practice yesterday. Now, I saw photos of you after that Blue Angels flight. What were those G-forces like? Because you were looking pale oh, we that went, day. We went nine Gs a couple times. Now, I, I was passed out for a lot of it, but you I was trying out. to stay awake. Oh, you were yeah. out cold. Oh, I was out cold. You were a pilot. You were a trained pilot. You were suddenly out. Now, you weren't yeah. flying those planes. Yeah. I don't have the right body type to fly those planes and, and take those G-forces. What's the right body type? A little more plump? Think, think of a 5'10", 225 linebacker. Nice. Because they have more mass, so their blood won't flow through as... Interesting. Uh, yeah. When I got on there, I, I said, hey, I've been working on the techniques, the grunting, because the Blue Angels fly with no G-suits. With no G-suits? Yeah, those, those F-16s, they fly with no G-suits because of the way the plane is engineered and because the G suits push your blood back in your muscles when you pull G's. Well, in that, the stick is, is down between your legs. So if you've if you got pressure going, pushing your muscles, you could press against the stick flying the plane. Accidentally. So, so they're, the, they're the elite of the elite, no G suits. So I did not have a G suit in there. And, um, you didn't. And, and the guy I flew with, and he told me, like, you got the worst body type, tall and skinny. <laughs> Good luck. Plus core. But they're, they're, they're talking to you when you wake up. <laughs> okay. I, went out, I went out three times. You went out three times. Yeah. And they couldn't just do a lazy fly around Lincoln? No, no they, they had to do the full deal. They, they do the full deal. And they're always and in every, formation. Everything's a, so it's a training run for yeah. them. So that pilot is training. And so the, the guy you go up with is he's number seven on the Blue Angels. So he's the backup pilot. And if somebody would get sick or something, but he's constantly training eventually to move in the top six. So he's up there training. He goes, okay, we're, this is, we're doing this maneuver. And it's all things they do in the show. He says, okay, now we're simulating coming in over, we're going to make a sharp stop to land on a carrier. So we're coming in at 400 knots and they pull a 9G turn and come down and land. I mean, we're pulling this maneuver right now because this is what we do in battle, but it's stuff they do in the show too. And... So he's talking you through it, like this is why we're doing it, and we're going to pull nine Gs right now. For those who weren't in the cockpit that day, for the nine G turn, can you simulate the sounds that came out of your mouth during that turn? 
No, it, it's like it's it's like you get you know when you get an operation and they say okay count down and you, you just go out. That you that, just fade it out. Yeah, I'm like because it's you have to grunt. You so I'm grunting, grunting, tightening boom, up out. your core. Out, boom, out in, just out. like boom, like that. Nebraska at Illinois Thursday night. Are the Blue Angels going to escort the, the plane to Champaign? That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> Gotten a lot of airtime tonight. 402 413, well deserved. 402 413 2400. Tonight's Nebraska Volleyball Show brought to you in part by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres, solutions for every field. Have you seen the big old Acres building at the Seward exit on I 80? No, I've not. But the the uh, Champions Club is now the Acres Champion Club. Nice. They got they got four wheelers down there. They got Acres all over. It's pretty cool. Premier John Deere dealer, yeah. the entire state. And Nebraska eight one one says, "Go dig red." Before you dig, always click or call eight one one to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. More Nebraska volleyball show after you hear this on the HRN. When you choose Woodman Life, you choose a better life insurance company. Yes, Woodman Life is life insurance, but so much more. Woodman Life is here to protect your family's financial future and offer help when the going gets tough. And Woodman Life is honored to join you in the celebration of family, community, and country. Get to know Woodman Life at woodmanlife.org. Woodman of the World Life Insurance Society, Omaha, Nebraska. You always dreamed of owning your own farm. Now you're living your dream, and it's time to pick the tractor that makes it all come together. Massey Ferguson has reinvented what compact and utility tractors can be and redefined what they do, making them easier to operate, more comfortable to drive, more versatile than ever. Massey Ferguson gives Nebraska farmers the power and performance to win in the field. Carney Equipment, Carney, Nebraska, your big red Massey Ferguson dealer in central Nebraska. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. What is HighBid.com? It's the online auction site for just about everything under the sun. Art and antiques, cars and coins, office equipment and furniture, toys and tools. You can find it all at HighBid.com. HighBid.com gives you access to thousands of auctions across the USA and around the world. Browse the most popular auctions, search for the exact item you want, or just explore the site. Go to HighBid.com, that's H-I-B-I-D.com, and find what you're looking for today. Let Shelter Insurance get you in the game this football season. The Nebraska Huskers are gearing up for another big year, and this is your chance to win tickets from Shelter Insurance and the Husker Radio Network. Contact a Nebraska Shelter agent and they'll register you for a chance to win tickets to one of four home football games this season. Only shelter agents can register you, so call, email, or drop by for your chance to win. Find an agent near you at shelterinsurance.com slash huskers and ask them to register you to win. You've trained for this all year. Endless hours of cardio, conditioning, and weights. And now you are ready. Ready to trek back to your seat from the concession stand. Through the lines, lost fans, and that mascot who wants you to do a little dancey dance, all without spilling a drop of your ice cold Bud Light. Welcome back to football, sports fans. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402 413 2400 with your Husker thoughts. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. 
Kearney Sports Bar and Grill is the place to watch Nebraska games this season. Locally owned and operated, Addie's is Omaha's premier sports bar with four locations in Elkhorn, Maple Street, Millard, and the new flagship Capital location in downtown Omaha. If it's Husker game day, it's on at Addie's. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill is Omaha's official watch party spot with game day giveaways, prizes, fun, and more surprises later in the season. Addie's Sports Bar and Grill. See you there for the game. This year, don't just get ready, get holiday ready with Ford. And the best place to start is at your local Ford dealer. Whether you're getting out to the mall or getting off the grid, we've got a Ford SUV that's perfect for you. Or check out America's best-selling trucks, Ford F-Series. Inventory is arriving daily, so get the season started off right and get our best offers during the Get Holiday Ready sales event at your local Ford dealer. Best-selling claim based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Hey, Husker fans, if you're looking for an exciting new career as part of your pandemic recovery, Iowa has over 75,000 job openings in industries such as healthcare, advanced manufacturing, construction, IT, and ag. IowaWorks.gov has more information about job openings, earn while you learn apprenticeships, and exciting training and scholarship opportunities. Find your next great job in Iowa. They've got a solid game plan, a bright future, and want you on their team www.iowaworks.gov celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics check out what's new in Omaha which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and zone 6 in Exarbon Village another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes Noddle Companies creating long-term value through community development for more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Dave's is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs, Texas beef brisket, Georgia chopped pork, and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDaves.com for all your catering and online ordering needs, or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Welcome back. The opponent on Thursday night for Nebraska volleyball, Illinois, Huff Hall, Champaign-Urbana, Illini Red Hot. They've won four in a row, including at Penn State on Saturday night in four, their last loss here at Nebraska, one of the Big Red's biggest nights of the season Huskers in control that night, 25-21, 25-15, 25-19. It's a very tough, suddenly ranked Illinois team. And then at Ohio State on Saturday night, their inner circle when it comes to teams with realistic chances for a national championship. Another tough week for the Big Red. Here's Husker Dan, beautiful West Point, Nebraska. Hello, Husker Dan. Hey, guys. How are you this evening? Good. How much snow did you get? We didn't. We had a we had a really hard frost. Oh, okay. I the, thought the grass was the grass was white, but it wasn't snow. It was it was frost. Okay. Yeah, I, thought scrape I, was, around. I thought I thought I saw West Point got like five inches or something. But okay. No, my wife's flowers all died. Okay. Well, that it's that time tough. of year. That can be tough on the marriage. <laughs> yeah. She said, "Let them go. Yeah. They're done." Get the so. fake ones. They'll they'll last the winter. <laughs> okay, uh, John and I and I got a question for you and a comment but i i just want to from the rest of the season on i want to wish you and the team uh all the i think you got it going on so anyway um in your timeouts i'm i just i'm curious during your timeouts a lot of your assistants talk to the girls a lot of the time and i want to know when do you step in to talk to the girls, and is it an old crap moment when the girls see you come in and talk, and they're like, this is serious, or I guess you can elaborate on that a little bit, but, uh, and, and my comment is, <laughs> that girl, Kathy, when she jumps that high and spikes that ball, I, I just think she's not human, <laughs> and, and, yes, I, and I will, uh, let you guys contemplate that and then uh, answer my question and and have a have a 
awesome night, guys. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Good question. So, uh, first of all, Kayla's playing really well, and, and she improved her vertical jump. You know, this is her fourth or fifth fifth year playing. I, I came fourth year playing volleyball. Second year with Nebraska. Yeah. But, yeah, fifth and last year. year was a short year, but she improved her vertical three inches this summer. Since she got here? Yeah. Well, since three the, inches. Over the summer? Yeah. That's inc for somebody that jumps well already to do that is incredible. Are so, you putting together videos for the rest of the state? Because yeah. everyone wants to get an extra three inches. Well, it's just, it's just uh, doing our program and working hard at it and, and uh, you know, all the little things that go along with that. But uh, to Husker Dan's question about timeouts. So mm -hmm. typically we call a timeout. Uh, I'm talking to the setter uh, and it's kind of a side conversation, just, you know, any adjustments we need to make. If the other team calls a timeout, typically I don't say much because Tyler will be in there talking about how we're going to try to win the next point. Um, if we call a timeout, then typically I will talk to the team about here's what we need to do, passing or attack, or we're going to run a play. And then after that, sometimes Tyler will come in and say, okay, after we side out, this is what we're going to be looking for on the, on the next play. So he's watching our opponent. I'm watching our side, and that's kind of how we divvy up the timeouts. Here's Mark in Omaha. Hello, Mark. Great to have you on the Nebraska Volleyball Show. Hello, Mark. Oh, hello. Uh, I wanted to ask Coach, uh, if we might be seeing Kennedy Orr sometime this season and wondered how her progress is. She is doing well. Um, she's getting better every week. I think she's getting confidence. Um, physically, she just uh, PR'd, and uh, we jumped test yesterday. She, I think she PR'd her tight her personal best. Um, so... Um, She's getting close. The problem is, it's, you know, throwing her in against uh, Illinois, Ohio State, Minnesota, Wisconsin is not the, the easiest way to start off your, your college career. But um, love the progress and the work that she's doing. And um, she has a chance to be a special player. But, uh, you know, we just got to look for the right opportunities to, to get her some time. In retrospect, Coach, do you wish you had read her? her uh, no, we season? needed her against, uh, you know, UNO. well, we thought – when Nicklin was out, I mean, we thought, I mean, and she played great for a couple games and she hit the wall. So, um, and of course, then we got Nicklin back shortly after that. But, um, um, you know, it takes, it takes a while to get over, you know, an injury like that. And remember, she didn't play, she, she didn't play for the whole, I mean, she didn't play for eight months. She got hurt and then it's been out, you know, it's been a year just last month. So, I mean, she went. She's gone almost two years without playing. You once told me, and thanks so Mark, much, Mark, for the question. You told me once, and this might have been a private conversation, that your observation of her as a freshman in high school was that she was the equivalent or possibly even better at that point than her older sister, who was a great setter at Iowa yeah. and four years old. Oh, wasn't even close. I mean, really? she was playing high school volleyball as a seventh grader in Minnesota. You're allowed to play if you're in junior high, won a state championship as a seventh grader. And she won, remember, she won, she led the USA team the first time ever in the history of the program to the USA Youth World Championships gold medal. Okay, think about all the players that have played college volleyball and have had the opportunity to play in the world championships, either youth or junior, and she led that team to a gold medal. 402-413-2400. It just begs the question, all right, greatest, most accomplished setters in the sport. Everyone starts with Misty May. Yeah. And I always thought Kelly Hunter is in the conversation for a second I, I because put, she's such a winner. Yeah, I put Kelly up there anywhere. But then I'm, I was thinking about it going into the Wisconsin match. Lauren Carlini. Cor Lauren Carlini didn't, really, didn't win a national championship. And Kelly she won, won two. Ten. Kelly won two. Uh, I think you got to put Alicia Glash in there. I think she won three. She won three. Yeah. Um, I'm slowing down. Yeah. All the setters, all the years. Yeah. Stanford um, and Stanford. Well, Stanford. I just know. I just know. Uh, uh, I'll tell you the setter who impressed me the most since we've been in the Big Ten. Carlini was great. 
But the, the setter who impressed me the most came into the van and beat us was Jordan Poulter from Illinois when they came in and beat us. And I just thought, okay, she's on another planet. The stuff she was doing and the plays she was making, I mean, I'm like, I'm just in awe watching her. And I'm, I'm not even really watching the match. I'm just watching her do her thing. And, of course, she just led the USA to the gold medal and, and beat out Carlini on that team. Yeah. And then you, some people might say, well, Micah Hancock. But Micah was, is not a great setter. And if you saw her in the Olympics, she's not a great setter. She's a great server and a great competitor and a great leader. And that's, that's why she's on that team. But she was not a great setter. If you, just, if you really study setting and watch video, and we played them, I never ever thought she was a great. Now, she had some great hitters. You know, I, you remind me some of those hitters she had. I mean, just throw, anybody could throw it up there, and they're going to, you know, kill it. So, um, but she was a winner. Won two national championships yeah. and probably would have won in 2012 if she doesn't sprain her ankle in the national semis. Yeah. And I think, uh, and for us, Rachel Holloway was, she was an exceptional setter, but she was, you know, short career here. But, um, Only about 5'10". Yeah, but maybe. She, she really could set and play the game, and uh, she was a special talent. 402-413-2400. This is your Nebraska Volleyball Show. Here's Jason in Lincoln. Hi, Jason. Great to have you here on the Nebraska Volleyball Show. Hey, Coach. Hey, JB. You're a living legend. Good to be on the program. Hey, Coach. Uh, tell me about road trips. Uh, at home, we turn off the TV and go about our evening and, uh, you know, at the arena, you jump in a car, wait in the line outside the, the van, and then we trickle home to wherever, you know, the players and you have to be fresh for practice and class and deal with jet lag and tests. And we don't hear a lot about how, uh, how that all works for these, you know, student athletes and, just kind of wonder if you could talk about that for a sec. I'll listen off the air. Thanks, Thanks guys. Jason. Yeah, great question. It's, it, it is a, a tough life. Now, the good thing is, uh, first of all, when you play an 8 o'clock match, so, you know, you, you, can't, you can't wind down till, you know, I, I don't care if the match goes 3 or 5. I mean, you just, you're, there's so much adrenaline, and so you never get a good night's sleep after an 8 o'clock match. So I just think those are crazy and, and it seems like we have a lot of them this year uh when you go when you go to the east coast penn state rutgers maryland i mean you're getting back uh you know two three in the morning and you're um you know it's again you got to try to get some rest get up work out go to class and then you know continue with the grind so what we try to stress with them is um trying to make sure we recover as best we can. So we emphasize to them, sleep is really important. Hydration is really important. Um, you've got to be able to calm yourself down with breathing and, and uh, uh, you know, and they all do, they all have this app called um, uh, Calm App, and they can use that to help quiet their mind. And you got to remember the other thing is, typically when we're on the road and traveling, it's not a party. They're studying, looking at their laptops and on, you know, all the time. So, again, that stimulates your brain. So we just try to talk about recovery. And then I ha I, every day I think this is a really important part of your question. So let's say we play on a Wednesday night at Penn State. We fly back Thursday. They'll lift that morning because we're playing Saturday. So we stay in our routine. I will go in to weights, and I'll talk to our strength coach. Okay, how are they doing? What's their mood? Who's, who's gassed? Who's, you know, and then we'll design practice to accommodate those, those days. If somebody had a really hard match and, like, Matty Kubi gets 60 swings, well, we can't have her come in and hit a bunch of balls the next day. So we customize our practices depending on the workload they had the night before. And then the ones that didn't have a lot of workload or didn't play, we'll, we'll train those guys harder and they'll lift harder. So it's a constant balancing act. And uh, teams that are mature and understand the recovery process and how important it is uh, and the nutrition part of it goes with that as well will have the best opportunity to recover and be able to play a great next match. Coach, you talked about how they don't 
you know, it's not a party. It's a, it's a lot of homework that they get to they do on on these road trips. Do you remember what Jordan would watch on every plane ride? No, I don't. Is Jordan Larson? Yeah. Oh no. A 2005 national oh. championship match. <laughs> the worst match she played yeah. as a Husker. She would watch and rewatch and rewatch Are that you serious? match. You remember that, huh? Every fl I think both ways, there and back. Wow. But definitely after a big win on the flight home, she's watching the 05 national championship when she played one of her. One for 21. <laughs> you remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the Nebraska Volleyball Show on the Husker Radio Network. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Welcome to Ag Answers, where we answer common questions related to farming and ranching. Today's topic, animal agriculture. There's been a lot of talk suggesting that giving up meat is good for the environment. However, livestock emissions only account for less than 4% of greenhouse gas emissions, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. Also, by reducing meat in your diet, you're missing out on all sorts of beneficial nutrients like protein, iron, and zinc. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Grace Fitzgibbon with Campus News. For the fourth year in a row, the University of Nebraska system ranked as one of the top 100 institutions worldwide in earning U.S. patents. The NU system was granted 38 patents, and of those, 27 were awarded to UNL researchers. The result? New startup companies, jobs, and university-licensed products that grow Nebraska's economy. Hello, I'm Tom Osborne. And I'm Coach Frost. Statistics prove that youth who are mentored and receive support and guidance from a caring adult show measurable improvement in academic achievement, motivation to succeed, and hope. Over the past 30 years, teammates have served more than 43,000 youth. And right now, there are more than 1,000 waiting for a teammate's mentor to visit with them once a week in school. For more information on how you can help the Teammates Mentoring Program, please go to teammates.org. And thank you for supporting our youth. Sponsored by Nebraska Crossing Fast Cash App. Both farmers and Division I athletes are alike in that every season presents a new opportunity. Aurora Cooperative does what they always do, which is lean into every new opportunity. They focus on their roots and continue to stay tougher together with their farmer owners. These core beliefs are much like those of committed Husker athletes. Aurora Cooperative leans on their values of a strong work ethic to get any job done for their producers. Aurora Cooperative, tougher together. Preparation. It's the key to success on game day. And like your favorite Huskers on the field, you need to be ready right from the opening kickoff. Senex has your pregame routine covered. We've got your salty snacks, your sweet treats, ice cold beverages to wash them down, and fresh tanks of propane to fire up the grill. Fuel your fandom at your local Senex station. Husker Pride, powered locally. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Score a game-winning drive when you buy your next vehicle at Sid Dillon Chevrolet. As a Chevrolet Business Elite dealer, we offer commercial vehicles, including medium-duty trucks and low-cab forwards. Whatever vehicle fits your needs, we're here to make the purchase process easy. Visit our Chevy locations in Blair, Crete, Fremont, or Wahoo. Plus, shop our full inventory at SidDillonChevy.com. You are what drives us, Sid Dillon. Chevy, find new roads. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the state of Nebraska. There really is no place like Nebraska Realty. 
Well, it's halftime. How do we kill 15 minutes? I think I have some really old hard candies in my purse. Ick. Well, it could play rock, paper, scissors. I'd rather eat the hard candy. Oh, I forgot. I bought a bunch of Nebraska Lottery scratch tickets before we came. Excellent. Hand them down. What a great selection. The Nebraska Lottery launches new scratch games every month. Anybody got a quarter to scratch them with? Anybody? Hey, hand me one of those old hard candies. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The 2021 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with 8.7 inches of ground clearance, more than Toyota RAV4 or Honda Passport. It's the best Outback ever. The 2021 Subaru Outback. Go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of July 2020. Visit Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue or at BeardmoreSubaru.com. Hello, I'm Tom Osborne. And I'm Coach Frost. Statistics prove that youth who are mentored and receive support and guidance from a caring adult show measurable improvement in academic achievement, motivation to succeed, and hope. Over the past 30 years, Teammates has served more than 43,000 youth. And right now, there are more than 1,000 waiting for a Teammates mentor to visit with them once a week in school. For more information on how you can help the Teammates Mentoring Program, please go to teammates.org. And thank you for supporting our youth. Sponsored by Nebraska Crossing Fast Cash App. Welcome back to your Nebraska Volleyball Show. There's the head coach, John Cook. The Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse Auto Family. Shop Woodhouse first. Why 18 brands, 16 convenient locations, simplified car buying to save you time. Shop, finance, and buy online. Woodhouse.com. This one brought to you by Dorothy Lynch. Homestyle and light and lean dressing. Endless flavor abilities. Hello, Richard, in Lincoln, Nebraska. Welcome. You're on the Nebraska Volleyball Show. Hello, Richard. Good, good evening. Good evening. Um, to put my question in context, I played basketball during the 1950s on wooden floors. But obviously, the volleyball team <coughs> excuse me, is not playing on wood. And uh, I think... We're somewhat familiar with AstroTurf and some of the football fields, but I'd like it if the coach could kind of tell us the different types of surfaces that the players are playing on, and are there some that are better than others? Yes, we, we play on a TerraFlex floor. It's, played in, it's used all over the world. It's made by a company in France that makes flooring for surgical rooms and factories where people are standing all day. It's a padded kind of rubber floor laid over the wood. You can lay it over anything. It's a great surface. It's easy to clean. You don't have to refinish it. And uh, it's way less wear and tear on their bodies. If you played on TerraFlex as a basketball player in the 50s, you'd probably still be playing. Nebraska Volleyball, the best show on TerraFlex. More Husker Volleyball show after you hear this on the HRN. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson. But when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name, too making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you with a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with relationships that bring more to the table the technology traits and genetics that take on local conditions and people with the know-how to use it and rob seco the only stockholder we listen to is you well, it's halftime. How do we kill 15 minutes? I think I have some really old hard candies in my purse. Ick. Well, it could play rock, paper, scissors. I'd rather eat the hard candy. Oh, I forgot. I bought a bunch of Nebraska Lottery scratch tickets before we came. Excellent. Hand them down. What a great selection. The Nebraska Lottery launches new scratch games every month. Anybody got a quarter to scratch them with? Anybody? Hey, hand me one of those old hard candies. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. 
Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across the state of Nebraska. There really is no place like Nebraska Realty. Pivot control has never been easier. T&L Irrigation now offers a new control panel called Precision Point Touch. It's a full-color, 7-inch graphic touchscreen that's easy to use and gives you lots of great tools to make your irrigation faster and more efficient. Set up your pivots the way you want. You can update your older controls to the new Precision Point Control Panel, too. Call your local TNL dealer or visit TLIRR.com. TNL Irrigation, like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's football season. Husker Nation and Famous Daves is here to make your tailgate, house party, or get-together famous. Award-winning and house-smoked St. Louis-style ribs. Texas beef brisket. Georgia chopped pork and house-made sides like our Wilbur beans, creamy coleslaw, and Dave's cheesy mac and cheese will surely tackle any barbecue craving. Visit FamousDave's.com for all your catering and online ordering needs or come visit us at our locations in Lincoln and Bellevue. Welcome to Ag Answers. Today we're talking about renewable biofuels like corn ethanol and soy biodiesel. Electric vehicles continue to make headlines as we look for ways to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But did you know by using ethanol, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 46% compared to traditional gasoline and by up to 86% when you use biodiesel compared to petroleum diesel? Locally produced biofuels are the here and now solution to combating climate change. They are good for our air, good for our wallets, and good for Nebraska. This message is brought to you by Nebraska's corn and soybean farmers. Welcome back to the Nebraska Volleyball Show. We have heard comments that Saturday night's match against Minnesota suddenly stopped being available online. So if you're listening via the app, the streaming service apparently went down after about two sets. There has been a discussion with them, and the expectation is that will not occur again. We have heard about that. Apologize for that. Good place to listen to the show on your favorite HRN affiliate. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT, Nebraska Highway Safety Office. And this one brought to you by Acres Equipment, Nebraska's premier John Deere dealer. 27 locations across Nebraska and into Kansas. Acres, solutions for every field. Paul and Wahoo is looking for solutions. Hello, Paul. Welcome here on the Nebraska Volleyball Show. How are you all tonight? Good. Great. That's good. Uh, the airs last weekend, are they more mental, physical? Just playing better teams, better competition. Um, I was wondering if there was a answer to those, and any chance Lexi may start this Thursday or this week? Is she in better shape yet? Thanks, Paul. So, uh, very quickly, uh, a lot of those errors are pressing a little bit. Uh, trying maybe a little too hard. There's, you know, it's, it's, it's a fine line in serving too. You're just always on the edge of, of getting it done or making a mistake. You want to push that edge. So we just pushed a little too much and we're a little bit high air and then started pressing. Uh, Lexi has a chance to start every match. Uh, you know, but she has to earn it in practice. Do we have time, guys, for Matt and Harrison? Let's go. I'll Matt. take that Let's as a Matt. no. He's been waiting. He's been waiting. Matt, Matt, Matt. Oh. Matt, you got 15 seconds. Go ahead, my friend. Good evening. Hey, it's uh, really always exciting to listen to you. And, JB, we appreciate your calls. And, oh, Coach, you. congratulations. Great, great teams. Go fast, Matt. Hey, just, just wondering about chemistry and how you build it and what are you looking for when you see it on another team? Can hang up and listen? Thanks, call, call the next radio show because that's a long answer. Thanks for the call and support, Matt. Chemistry, biology, Get physics. You're focused on chemistry. Thanks, Coach. Good luck against Illinois. All right, JB, thanks. And you're listening to your Nebraska Volleyball Show. Great job, everyone. Printers, great coverage. Phones, quick pickups. Firewall, tough defense. And network, way to carry the whole team. Ever since Marco started calling our technology plays, we work smarter and our whole game is more streamlined. Marco's all-star services and support give us the winning edge. Find out what your technology could be saying at marconet.com.
Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Lutz is an integrated business solutions firm born and raised in Nebraska with offices in Omaha, Lincoln, Hastings, and Grand Island. Lutz provides expert accounting, consulting, financial, technology, M&A, and talent solutions tailored to you. Lutz embraces your business as their own to discover the right solutions to help you thrive. They mind what matters for businesses or individuals seeking a partner to help energize and heighten financial and organizational success. Visit Lutz.us slash GBR. Much like the values of the people of Nebraska, Nebraska Realty was built on the principles of hard work, dedication, and doing things the right way. They believe strongly in the power of creating lasting relationships and the value those relationships hold. Their success is based on trust and the relationships created with the people and communities they serve across.